Hey everyone, welcome to Mach 3 Monday, episode 14. We want to address the common concerns regarding speed training. Uh, so this one actually makes me laugh. Number one, it takes away from short game practice because I've had people say, well, you know, you spend all this time chasing speed and what everybody really needs is to be out there chipping and putting. So in talking to the competitive golfers here, what I found is that their speed training takes about 1.5 hours per week and they practice their short game. These are competitive golfers from high school up to tour level. They practice their short game 16.5 hours per week. So again, 1.5 hours of speed training, 16.5 hours of short game practice. So that's just plain silly, stop. All right, number two, it leads to injury. Now, of course, that's a legitimate concern for any sports training. But the thing is in Mach 3, we don't train explosively because we found we don't need it to get the historical average of 11.5 miles an hour speed gain. So nobody's coming in here jumping on four foot boxes or running sprints with parachutes attack, attached to their waist. Uh, now, professional long drive, that's a different story. They do have to train explosively, but those guys are usually very, very good athletes with really good background in the type of training that they wanna do. Uh, but in Mach 3, we're not training explosively. We're not going beyond our natural limits. So we really have no injury uh, history to speak of in Mach 3. Number three, people are afraid they're gonna hit it sideways. Now again, intuitively, that's a legitimate concern. But really, what makes you think that? What makes you associate greater speed with less accuracy? I mean, do you think Nolan Ryan at uh, pitching at 80 miles an hour would be as accurate as he was at 100? Probably not because most uh, sports motions are more efficient at higher speeds. So just because there's greater speed in, in no way implies that there's gonna be less accuracy. And, and we've had, I'm gonna say, almost 6,000 golfers around the country. I've had three come back and say, hey, I'm having problem with my direction. And really those are the guys that can't separate swing mechanics from speed training. So they can't let go of their swing mechanics. And if they hit a couple wayward drives, they start obsessing about it and trying to connect speed training into that. But there's no reason why more speed would equal less accuracy. And then the last one is that it's difficult to gain speed. And I think in the past, that was the message. It's a hard thing to do. It is not a hard thing to do. It's easy to do. If it wasn't easy to do, we wouldn't have a 99.9% .9 success rate. And you're not going to be any different than all those other golfers that gain speed. It's an easy thing to do. You need the right concept and then you need good training tools and you need to stick to it until you get the speed you want. So there you go. Uh, these are the most common things that people approach me with about speed training, but I don't buy into any of them.